I'm mad. I'm woken. <laughs> <laughs> woken. All right, it's your boy Frankie Nunez uh, with the first episode of the LOL podcast for the 2023-2024 season. This is the pre-draft episode. I'm here live in studio with Coach Nick Muse, Coach Johnson, and Coach Dan O'Shea. Um, we're going to get to all the hard-hitting questions. We're going to address some of the rumors going into this season. We cannot be joined by Coach Colin Tully as he is uh, at the pro day for Tyler McCarthy. He's checking out Tyler McCarthy's private workout. Yep. Uh, these coaches here, they did not want to attend that workout for whatever reason. But Colin is checking out Tyler's workout, and uh, hopefully we get to know how that went. I heard it's a good one. You've seen it for the last 10 years, that workout. It's a great workout. Do you know his body as well as you know his brother, Kevin McCarthy's I body? Do, I don't. No. Well, I know you know Kevin's body pretty well. Yes. The ins and outs. And apparently he knows my brain. That yeah, Most people know your brain. It's very simple. It's very basic. All right, Frankie <laughs> Nunez here. and We're ready to uh, get to some of the questions. Uh, Colin's going to have the first pick. It'd be great to pick his brain about that, but we can address some of the rumors. Obviously, coaches, tell me if you've heard anything differently, but the rumor is he's interested in Frank Samisa number one overall. Yeah, that's not what I'm hearing. That's not what I'm hearing. And I'm hearing, uh, you know, there's also a, a metal band draft going on, so maybe I'm kind of mixing things up. But I hear he's taking Kassin number one overall. Um, just okay. the, the, you know, the raw talents there, the dedications there. So, you know, of course. We'll see. I we'll heard see. Mark Olivero. He's not on the draft board, so that would surprise uh, me. Mark Olivero? Yeah. Uh, Mark, yeah, that Olivero. guy. Olivero. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I listen. I spoke to Frank Samisa's camp, and Frank is saying that he has not been made aware by Coach Colin Tully or Coach Nick Muse that he will be drafted at one or two. He said the only camp that reached out to him is Dan O'Shea said Frank would not escape pick three. Dan, is there any truth to that? Uh, yeah, no, I would take uh, I would take Frank. I would take Frank at three. There's no doubt about it. Would. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, of course you would at four too. Did I take Doesn't... him last year? He wasn't available. <laughs> he wasn't available. <laughs> Exactly. Would you have taken him at two last year if he was available? Where I who did I take it to? You took Justin Renzo. Uh, no, yeah. took, oh, yeah, it was Justin, Justin then Renzo. The I don't one. think I could have done anything differently. You want to change? I don't think I could have done anything better than what I did last year. Fair so enough. Hard to, agree, hard to disagree. Nick go. Muse has have the roadies reached back out to Frank about a possible reunion uh, if he falls to two. Anything's possible, man. That's playing it close to the to the chest. I like that a lot. Obviously, we know that Dan O'Shea has reached out to Frank, but Frank is saying that uh, Colin has not reached out to him yet. We don't know how true those rumors are, obviously. But, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, what else could Colin do at one if it's not Frank? That's the question we need to answer. Is it Justin O'Shea? Where does he go? And you got to look at the QB situation this year. Of course, with Renzo's injury, who knows? Well, at the, at, at the way it looks right now, Tyler... <laughs> Might be right. He's at the pro yeah, day right now. Day. <laughs> he's watching a personal workout and he's hit his prime. Yeah, he prime. has hit his prime. Yeah. Listen, Ty, I'm proud of Tyler. Tyler's coming off his first championship. He's been in the league for many years. He's never won. This was big for Tyler. Yeah, he did a lot. <laughs> That's a great vote of confidence from his coach from last year. Uh, all right. So as we get to the second overall pick, Nick Muse hasn't given us much information, but give us some players you are looking at, Nick. Oh, man. I, you know, I like guys who show up to practice. So. Of course. Me, of course. As we do all. <laughs> How could you say something <laughs> wronger? Um, all right. Yeah. So is there anybody in particular, without being too specific, that has jumped off the page for you at scrimmages this year? Anybody whose play has really uh, amazed you? It's, it's a tough call, man, because in the first round, you know, uh, a lot of coaches are in a different situation where they do kind of have a QB to fall back on. I can't throw a ball to save my life, so... Uh, I got a draft with the QB situation in mind. To, no. to be honest, I don't know if I go receiver first or QB first. Knowing that you're bringing talent in Evan in, who we've all seen play, but this is someone that you have a personal relationship with, and do you feel a pressure to take him early? Um, I would say he's first round material. For certain. It's got to be considered. I think we all are. At the third pick, we've got Dan O'Shea. Dan has anyone stood out to you, and have you has your team contacted anyone specifically? Yeah, we've been uh, we've been thinking about Wesley Sullivan. Uh, now I know he hasn't showed up to any practices yet, but you know I'm I'm a big believer in balance, and he's uh, you know him being a big God guy, I'm a big Satan guy, so that kind of a yin and yang kind of thing. So. Dude, What's, uh, that, what this is a bunch of complete bullshit. What are you Y'all are about? not thinking about Wesley Sullivan. What are you no talking about? No one even remotely thinks you that think, you're thinking about Wesley do Sullivan. Do you think, hold on, do you think he's not an amazing athlete? Yeah. But so what's the know, problem? Why would I not think, is he not a first round talent? Uh, let's just say he's short of a full basket. 
<laughs> well, he's not a Satanist like myself, so I mean, yeah. I have to agree with that to some the extent. Enemy, no, Wesley's great. It's just I, we we all know you're not thinking about taking him first round. You don't have to blatantly. Lie. So who am I, who am I thinking of? I don't know. I'm not you, but it's not that. <laughs> uh, Holmes, as we get to the fourth pick, the returning champion, uh, obviously in a tough spot with the fourth pick. With that being said, if anybody can turn that around, it's you. Who are you looking at? Who's impressed you early? So I'm going to turn this completely around on its head right now. I'm not, I just want to think about, I'm thinking about a really good lower round pick or higher round pick. I just want to say that John Carson has been playing great. And yes. if there's anyone that who I've seen get better so quickly that you could like see his progress, I would love for John Carson to play uh, with the Mothman again. He has played great. If he's available. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, in the second round, if he's available, I um, would argue that this stage of the league, you have guys in the second round that could very well go in the second, very well go in the third. There is like a sticky talent spread between the second and third rounds right now. Where yeah, it's really hard to make a decision. And I at think that, level. that same spread exists in like the fifth and the fourth round yes. too, where you've got a couple guys that it feels like maybe their talent is high, but their attendance is low, and yeah. you don't know where to gauge that. So it's it's going to be an interesting draft. Uh, let's get let's address some of the rumors that have been that have been brought across Frankie Nunez's email. Um, the first is going to be with you, Holmes. Uh, I've heard that from Nick Del Monte's agent that you've been in constant contact with him the whole off season. That you want a reunion. You love the way he played last year. And I've heard that you've purchased some product from him over the off season. Some, <laughs> some. all of it. <laughs> Is there any truth to there being a possible reunion? Obviously, he was an MVP caliber player last year. Look, I personally vote. I look, Renzo played great. I love Renzo. He's my go-to QB, especially now. But, but uh, I personally voted for Nick Del Monte uh, for the MVP. He was amazing. And speaking of Renzo, is there any truth to the idea that Dan O'Shea's quarterback is set with Dan O'Shea? If Frank takes, if, if if Colin takes Frank, his quarterback room is set. Is there any truth to you holding Renzo for ransom, knowing that he's likely not to get drafted because of the injury, knowing you can draft him late third, fourth round? Uh, I think there's also one other quarterback that you're not thinking of. Nick DeRossi. Yes. I think there's uh, several quarterback co- candidates. Hardcore Johnny's thrown his name in the ring. I've as well. talked to him. I've been in talks with ah, him. Ah, so there's more rumors. I, no, it's not a rumor. I'm telling you, it's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I would love for Nick Del Monte to be on my team again. Uh, I that that I hope that happens, How but do I don't know, see. It's very hard. Uh, like if if he. Do I pick him fourth round if you're, you know, if uh, Frank Samis is taken, if, you know, it, it's, it. look, last year I kind of winged it and I got lucky. I think I might do the same thing again this year. Understood. Dan O'Shea, the rumors that have been uh, brought across my email for you is that you've been in constant contact with Justin O'Shea. Is there any truth to that? I've been talking to him, yeah. I mean, listen, he's uh, he's never been in better shape. So, uh, are we talking about? Wait, are we talking about, who'd you say? Al Roker? Oh no, Justin. Justin. All right, no, he's a little, he's a little heavier. But you know, listen, he's still amazing. He's still an amazing red zone target. Could he could still sling it too? I mean, a guy like uh, you know to kind of branch off. You know, if Colin had drafted him, you know that would be a great quarterback for Colin's team as well. You know, you don't have to worry about your thing, wide receiver. He's one. slinging his cheeseburger. He could sling it, bro. He could still sling. He could sling it just as good as I can. I'm fucking you know mediocre ass QB. So yeah, no, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been in talks with him. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a troubling thing though, because I'm so slow, and that if he's not a speed burner in that first round, it's it's tough. But you know, there's also rumors that that shocked some people that you have not been in touch with Matt King. Who said that? Matt King. Well, Matt King's agent, Paloma. Well, I, <laughs> uh, that's a half truth. I've been trying to get him to the scrimmages every like sure. week in, week out, and that would be the actual official official talking to. Right. But uh, he hasn't actually shown up really outside of one time. So the so. the rumors concerning the roadies this year are that you were named Nick Coach Nick Muse was named the official godfather of Nick Jarossi's child. Is there any truth to that? Well, I've not heard this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we haven't seen Nick Jarossi yet. We know he's normally someone you consider at quarterback. Is his attendance an issue for the roadies right now? With Nick, no, I would say it doesn't. Doesn't affect his draft status. My man it's, had a kid. Yeah, so, but do we expect, do, do any of you here think that he's going to come a lot this year once the season starts? He comes every day. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I just hope, I just hope that you know. I know having a kid's a big thing. Like, do I, you? Yeah. That's what coming off and leads. To, we right? never thought that yeah. he would have a kid, but I guess he did. Um, but do you guys see him showing up? At, you know, at least making an effort to show Does up. Does it affect his ability to throw a ball? Um, it affects his ability to throw a ball during game day when he doesn't know the plays. I would say that. Or he's not familiar with the routes people are going and the speeds I, they're going to run I it spoke at. directly. I didn't speak directly to um, Nick Jirasi, but his I agent. spoke. I didn't speak to his agent. I spoke to John A. And John A. <laughs> said, John A. said, I should not expect to see Nick Jirasi this year. That, that's Shouldn't that's a bummer. Him. Is he planning on coming draft night? Yes, and so is John A. I, I said to John A. I ran into John A. And he said, I shouldn't expect to see him. Yeah, he said the same thing to me. He said, no, you won't see me, Joe Lavo, or Nick Jirasi. Besides the two, game night, game day, and draft night. That's it. So we'll see what happens. But no, Jirasi has told us that he does plan on showing up very soon. They're in a critical stage with this infant's life. What's that and, stage? I don't know. Birth? Infancy. Infancy know. Birth yeah. is the stage. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure that we'll see plenty of Nick Durasi. Probably see enough of Nick fucking Durasi. I've seen the right amount of him in the last year, and that's been zero Look, fucking Look, the only thing I have to say is, you know, maybe if I saw him a few times before draft night, which doesn't seem like that's going to happen now since we're so close, I might have thinking differently about my draft order. Holmes has obviously given us his under the radar player with uh, John Costa. Nick Muse, who's yours? Under the radar, I was gonna say John Costa. I mean, that guy knew John Costa this year. It's, yeah, it's, knew it's, John. We got two two votes for John Costa. Dan, are you gonna go a different way? Well, I'll go a different way just because we already talked about Costa and what he brings to the table. He's he's no longer under the radar. Uh, you know right. what I mean? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with a guy named Josh Paini. Uh Not really brought up as a guy. You're not that... taking my. <laughs> That Josh you, only plays you for the Mothman. You That's know true. This. He's never played for another organization. You, you will not take until Josh. this year. I won't. You won't. Uh, well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> I'll take him first round. <laughs> Maybe he's not under the radar either. <laughs> All right, Zach Paini. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You can have him. Uh, no. So as we get a little bit closer, as we as we have, we're down to one scrimmage, which is going to be Christmas Eve, and we don't know what attendance is going to look like on holiday. Um, but is there anything specifically you guys are looking for that might change your mind? People who look, whoever shows up on Christmas Eve is making a big statement right there. I'll just say that, that they care about LOL, that they care about being there, about the, what we have going. Yeah, I don't give a shit about your family. I don't give a shit about your dumb gay Christmas. Yeah, show up to football. You know what I mean? Do that shit later. It's yeah. Christmas Eve anyway. It's not even real Christmas, so come on. It's you know, be there. As a yeah, Jesus wasn't born yet. Exactly. You're Jewish, Matt King. Come on. <laughs> or reborn or whatever. <laughs> he's a big Christ guy, though, despite he's his He's half Jewish, Judaism. all right? He's half, he doesn't need two days. If he's half Jewish, he doesn't need two Christmas days, okay? Is, is there anybody that uh, you guys are... Uh, obviously, this is going to be a loaded question, but... Is there anybody that you're trying to keep? Anybody's name you're trying to keep out of this podcast? Because you really, you really don't want anybody drafting that person. Yeah, there's a lot of sleepers. Or you just don't want to talk about that person. Right. Well, I'm just thinking. You know, uh, last year when I uh, when I spoke specifically to Frank Samisa and Nick Muse when they were drafting, they really wanted to keep Dingo's name as quiet as possible. They didn't want anyone picking him. Obviously, he's become a household name with his play the last couple seasons. But is there anybody else that you guys are really trying to not talk about? Yeah, I want to not talk about one guy. I don't even know if I should bring him up because I was kind of hoping we would just forget about him and he wouldn't show up to any games or anything like that. Uh, you probably know who it is, right? It's Ken Silver. So, I, so I'm hoping Silver. we just is forget about Is he going to be there draft night? Yeah, he is. Is he going to be there any other time he's, besides he said like, draft night and he game He said day? likely he'll come out for one set of scrimmages. And uh, game day, which is more than we'll see Lobo or John A. Here's the big question. Is he going to play quarterback again? (laughs) Only for you. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it's better than nothing, right? You got Renzo there. (laughs) Anybody you've been looking at, uh, Nick Muse? Uh, There's a lot of names, and it's the attendance guys for me, like I said. Yeah. Jesus, Johnny Vega, as receivers, these guys. Is is it surprised anybody that you've seen Vega more this year than you have in the last five years combined? Yeah, because I had to pay him. (laughs) (laughs) What do you guys think about Johnny's uh, chances at cracking the scene as a quarterback, which is his wishes? 
Oh, I think it would be reopening the seal because he. We all know it already happened. Uh, you know, it's happened previously in Has LOL he history. It? I don't know if he started, Early but days. we all know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, not not a real. You know, maybe here and there, but not. Like... I I think he's listen. <clears throat> when you put the film on from what he's done this year in scrimmages, you see a lot of inconsistency. He's thrown the ball to the other team quite a few times, but he's also had a lot of really nice throws, especially out to the boundary. So I've been a little bit impressed with what I've seen with limited reps. And this is where we'll cut and paste the clip of Johnny Vega making that beautiful throw during last week's practice. You got some good footage, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I think it's all going to come down to reps. I mean, yeah, he comes in, takes it every weekend. Says, mm-hmm. I, I, I got to say, throw. he's probably got what the third or fourth most reps at quarterback this off season so far. Mm-hmm. It's got to be. He's he's taking a lot of reps. Me, me, Frank, Justin, and then yeah, yeah. yeah Justin him. has played poorly at quarterback, so we'd we'll love to see right. Limit, limited QB slots in this league. You can't have one foot in, one foot out. You got to be. That's true, but that's why I think the Renzo situation is so interesting because it's yes. like. You're going to draft this guy. You know he's going to be your quarterback, but he's not going to be your quarterback until game day. Until game day. So do you get a guy like Hardcore Johnny, supplemental, so he can take those reps at quarterback, but then you take it away from him when Renzo's healthy? It's a tough conundrum. Mm-hmm. I think, see, I, I think Renzo, well, first of all, he said even if he will play, which he most likely will, we all know he'll yes, play, he but will. he said he will be strictly an offensive uh-huh player playing quarterback, quarterback. there yeah. will be no defense from him he also said that he will not have any ability to escape the pocket and rush once he's rushed so yeah you've got a that's a big part of his game oh it's huge he's one of the most elusive players he might be the most elusive player in the league yeah i bet he's still more elusive than me so oh there's no question about that he's more elusive than you right now exactly <laughs> um but no i'm excited to uh the renzo situation is interesting we're talking it's not like we're talking about uh, a fifth round talent it's not like we're talking about a second or first round talent we're talking about the mvp of the league we're talking about the best player in the league as of last year and we're talking about a guy that could go as late as the third or fourth round he also put in like uh, you know during, like history of the league you know he's been a little bit more you know he didn't come a lot his attendance was low but last year he really uh, he put was... in the time he put in the work and it showed game day let me ask you this holmes what's too early to draft a guy that's not going to play till game day Fifth? Fifth. Wow, that's too early. Fifth is too early? Or that's so you're thinking about getting him in the sixth round. Uh, I can assure you that won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hoping like you guys will just be like, all right, take him. Like, I have heard a rumor about one other coach interested in Renzo, and it blew my mind. But we won't get too far into that. Um, now, with that being said, when you talk about roster construction, when you talk about the draft being this far away, is there a certain team philosophy? It's next week. Yes, um, well, that's what I mean. Oh, this so close. close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is there a certain team philosophy you think about outside of just attendance, which obviously every coach is looking at, but there is there certain certain something that you look at, Holmes, like, man, we want to be a running team. Let me get some big bodies. Is there anything like that you're thinking about at this stage? So last year, it's we were more of, of an offensive threat, with, and our D was so-so. More, I, actually, we were probably more of a little bit of – uh, twinkled in everywhere. Right, sure. Twinkle like, toes. A little twinkle. You know, it's the Christmas season. Twinkle this, twinkle this. Yeah, because I've been wondering how to win a championship. Yeah, so go yeah. on. You get your look, notebook yeah. out. <laughs> being a uh, being a well rounded team is obviously the most important part of playing in this league. But I think this year we're gonna be special teams pros. Oh, so a lot of kicking. A lot of kicking, a lot of. So that means he's going to drive a lot Jesus of illegal early. tackles, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Damn, this is a this is going to be a bad year for the Mothman, most likely, and wow. I'm going to make sure wow. somehow wow, I still man. stand out. Dan, anything, any specific philosophy you're looking for? Speed kills, man. Speed kills in this league. You know, I mean, it's if you can harness a little bit of speed, it's 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 game over. You know what then I mean? You it's, can't be thinking about Justin O'Shea. Well, I'm still thinking about him. <laughs> That's why I'm thinking about Josh Paini and Matt King and Josh Paini. Zach, Zach Paini. And... Any comments from the three of you guys on some of the changes to the roster? Obviously, we've had a few guys out. We have a few guys in. We have somebody returning and Hardcore Johnny. Any comments on some of these players that we don't know a lot about, such as Evan or Reed Lynch? We do know a little bit of, about Evan, though, right? Sure, he course. He was there a bunch last year, right? Yeah. Has he come at all this year? Yes, he has. Okay. Yeah, he's good, right? But it's like it's do, does anyone want to take like 
Does anyone take the shot of take of grabbing him in the first round? Probably not. No, but Colin Tully would not let him escape five. There's no way. Yeah, so he's like he, so everyone here agrees he's probably a second round pick. At the latest, he's the fifth overall pick. I think he probably goes in the first. And he round. has said he will show up between now and game day. Oh, for sure, he showed up plenty. And who's the other person? Uh, Reed Lynch, who we've only seen once. I know, I know a lot about Reed Lynch. He's good. He's really good. He's a hell of a character. And if you're looking for someone to buy some of those, uh, those, those things yes, that you're picking up, great... Whoa, say no more. <laughs> Reed's, a, Reed's a, he's definitely a character. He's got good speed. He's got bad lungs. So he burnt Justin O'Shea to a crisp, and then he had to go take a vape break. Is that that ginger kid, like that mm. kind of crackhead looking one that showed up that one time? No, he's no. never showed up. Do you know who I'm talking about, no. though? The last year you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was Dan like, had a good time with Kenny. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Dan had a good he was time a good with guy. Kenny. He, he comes and immediately starts, like, talking trash and, like, yeah, and being was, a dickhead. Dan had a good time with Kenny. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, but no, we, we're going to see good things out of that rookie class. It's a small rookie class, but we're going to see good things. Obviously, Hardcore Johnny back in the league. Uh, it's a good 28. It's definitely a good 28. And like you guys said, when you talk about guys like John Cosson or Matt Warner elevating their game, even the guys that you're going to get later in the draft are, are right now, It's I think it's more talented than it's ever been. See, the problem, the problem we have in this league is the drop from the elite players to the good players – there's such a big gap right there. Sure. Like you go from you go from the first round picks like that stand the you know, the players that really stand out to I'm not saying you know, the other people are bad, maybe some of them. Me being included, but but that drop is a very steep drop. Is that why, as a as a fourth round, as a, as the fourth pick, you're uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that why you're punting on the season? I will be punting a lot. Okay. Is that why it's the, the drop off? It's just not enough talent on your roster. Anything that makes you have to run for the ball. Holmes, you said that the drop off in town from round one is steep. Can you give us a little idea of who you think the four round one players are? Who you think the best four players are? Well, I'm gonna I'm uh, let's take Evan out of the equation since we don't really know much about sure. him. But you have you know Frank Samisa, Justin O'Shea. I'm not including any of the coaches either. Frank Samisa, Justin O'Shea, Renzo's out of it. You know, technically right. speaking, sure. the first round. You got JJ and you got Nick Del Monte, right. right? After that, tell me who the next best player is. Uh, I would it's, put, it's I would a, put... It's a very big bracket I, after I, that. I, listen, I do think he gets slept on too much, but I think you have to... You have no choice but to start putting John Mack in that conversation. He's locking up Justin. He's I forgot about him. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I think, think it's yes. wider than you think it is. Okay, after, after John Mack. After John Mack. Matt King, you got... you know. Jesus. We didn't see anything out of Matt <laughs> King last <laughs> Mac, Mac King, Why does everyone really keep good. like saying Matt King, Matt <laughs> King? Like, what are we talking about here? He's Mac been in the, he, the league for like three he years. He played really good. Great, he played great for you that first that first game. Yeah. That first we season. fucking lost. Bad. <laughs> he ran into a juggernaut. He didn't do play good enough. Obviously. He did more than you did. And Wesley obviously is in those elite players too, but we haven't seen a lot from him either. This, and this is going to be one. I think this year is going to be your, your scrimmages are going to look so much different than game day, and more so this year I think than any other year. And I don't think it'll always be like this. It's just the way the schedules are this year. With people got work, people got kids, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we're getting older. scrims are going to be no indication of what game day is going to look like. So there's going to be a lot of risk taking on. on you saw that happen day. a bit last year. I mean, I thought we were going to play good, but I didn't think we were going to play great with, like that. With you guys being so dedicated to attendance, which is obviously important, where does someone like Joe Lavo rank on your big board? I mean, he's always a, he's always someone I want on my team. Of course, because he brings the fun and he brings the fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Joe Lava, reach out. Joe Lava was 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 critical for my team. Though. I said it first. <laughs> uh, and what about the same question for someone like John A, who you don't see much of? John A, is just <laughs> if you want to see a lot of dick, <laughs> then you, <laughs> you want to see a lot of cock and balls. You draft. That, son. There you go. That's huge. Now, Holmes, there's some... Uh, speaking of Matt King, who you just brought up, there were some rumors that you and him had a conversation in the great city of Boston about how sometimes, even though you shake your dick after you're done pissing, you still end up getting a bunch of piss on yourself. <laughs> can you can you, can you? Yeah, I want you to actually demonstrate your, your shake technique, too. <laughs> I just want you to demonstrate. Maybe if there's a camera there. No, give us a good. So you piss. So hold your dick and you piss. 
How is this? Well, a, is first this... of all, this isn't a great representation of my dick. It's modeled. If that's it's a, your dick, it's rock a plastic. Art, you got an average dick, okay? That's not average. Someone that's explain huge, to dude. the listeners what we're seeing here. Uh, Holmes is holding a pink gelatinous uh, creation. Wait, you're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you're squeezing it kind of hard. That would hurt. So, so anyway, Matt is thinking that he doesn't want to play for you this year because he's afraid you're gonna have piss all over yourself. I mean, uh, the past um, so far we've been wet a lot anyway. At practice. <laughs> so I don't think he would notice it has rained a lot of our practice yeah. days. It has been an awfully wet Sunday for the last. And Mom, you know what? I haven't seen him Sunday. there, so what is he worried about? <laughs> He's worried about getting pissed on, I think. <laughs> uh, no, but it was uh, it was definitely an interesting conversation hearing you talk about getting pissed all over yourself in a crowded restaurant. But What was that restaurant again? Canes. Raising Canes. Hell yeah, that place that is sick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is where we put the ad in for Raising Canes. Okay. All right, there. <laughs> is there a button for this? <laughs> Yeah, just what? As football fans, Raising Cane's believes in rushing quarterbacks. Raising Cane's. But not our hot, fresh, 24-hour marinated chicken. Raising Cane's. We believe in running out the clock. Raising Cane's. But never out of our refreshing sweet tea and lemonade. Raising Cane's. Because when it comes to football season, we go all out. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have, uh, well, what, what else? Is there anything else we have to make sure to bring up besides me shaking my dick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plenty. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is a good opportunity to uh, get a very tiny but necessary mock draft going, and I'll take the place of Colin Tully for now. You know what? Why don't we do this a little bit backwards to make sure there's no uh, mystery. Uh, Dan, you're going to draft for Holmes. Okay. Nick Muse, you're going to draft for Colin. I'm going to draft for uh, for Dan. And you'll draft for Nick Muse. All right. Can okay. we can we do this series? We're doing it series. Yes. No no okay. fucking around. All right. So Nick Muse, you're drafting for Keem Tully. Where is he going? Keem Tully. I think he's going with Frank Samisa. All right. Let's get Frank um, off the board. That's Number a, one. That, I I would agree with that. Yes. I hope not. Uh, uh, you're drafting for uh, the roadies. Okay. <sighs> now you're me. Yeah, I know. Who am I picking? I don't know because I feel Who like I no matter what I say, Nick's going to be like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, you mean I don't get two players the first, the second pick? Would you pick somebody? You All right. I, 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 I would probably – see, is it – he he said in the beginning of this podcast he was looking for a quarterback. He didn't know if he was looking for a quarterback. I would say J- JJ or possibly – he would try and fuck with us and take Renzo. I don't know. I'll say JJ. JJ off the board at number two. This is the first round pick I've made before. It is. And it's not a bad uh, one. I'm drafting for Dan O'Shea, and we're going to go Justin O'Shea. This is practical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's and then, uh, no surprises here. I'm going to go Del Monte. Del Monte, yes. Great pick. All right. Uh, Nick Muse, you're up. <clears throat> drafting for Team Tully. All right, I'm Colin Tully. I'm probably going Ian here. Ian, off the I board. think we're gonna get us to see like a reassembly of that championship team to a degree. All right, Nick Muse is up next. See, this is this is where it starts getting hard. Um, I would say he either takes John Macca or or he takes um, Jaras. I'm gonna say Macca. Macca off the board. So I'm pushing the QB thing. To the late round. Well, you know, you still got two free QBs. One uh, in this scenario, yeah. there's no way Evan escapes uh, Team Dan, so Evan would go to Team Dan. You don't know that. Ev- Evan's Nick's friend, right? So he might have taken Evan second. Whatever, we'll leave it as be. Uh, all right, that means Dan, you're drafted for Holmes. Yeah, punted uh, for us. I, I think at the, <laughs> I think at this point we gotta go, we gotta go west, right? Oh, there's more people down. Wesley off the board. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. All right, Nick Muse, you're drafting for Team Tully. All right, so I'm Tully. I mean, this could be Matt King. Yeah, I think it could be. I think. I think that's the pick I would make. For a third-round pick, uh, Nick Shu takes Nick Jaross. Jaross, wow, that fell into his hands perfectly. I don't know if he gets to the third, but I, I think you're that's right. Not, that's looking like a good team so far. Oh, of course it is. I don't know if he's getting the third. All right, uh, for the Smokes... I think you're going to see in this scenario, oh, man, 
They still are. They're they're a talented team. Is this a good place to take that risk on Renzo? Is this that place? I think so. I think Renzo is off the board here. Dan just can't pass up the talent, and he doesn't want Holmes to get his quarterback. What a dick. Interesting. <laughs> and this is scandalous. This is the flight of the fourth round, right here. Right. I mean. This is the risk you take. Okay, I think uh, we have not taken Jesus yet. Is that correct? Yeah, that's yeah, right. It's got to be Jesus here. Jesus off the board. And I, I don't think you see a guy like Jesus go later than the third. Yeah, yeah this is this is Jer very late for Jesus. I'm yeah, surprised. I think Jirasi and Jesus are in some late spots in that round. All right, uh, Nick Muse drafted for Colin Tully in the fourth round. Ooh. I think in the fourth round, if you got what you got here, there's an argument for Ken Silver, but I think... Kevin McCarthy is the logical pick. Totally couldn't agree with you more. Um, I would say that Nick, if I was Nick, I would probably take. Oh, he he already has his QB. Okay, I'd say Nick would take Josh Pinini right here. That's a good pick. You see how Josh is moving up. He always did. I mean, he always. Does he's got a rock hard one? His Twitch, <laughs> his Twitch stream has been off the charts. It's about to be well, a good segue. Yeah, what's his how Twitch do you compare, name? How do you compare the the Pineys? Uh, Josh, I I think Zach is the better athlete. Zach's yeah. faster, stronger, smarter, cool. Because we didn't get, get to see him. Yeah, you can get hurt. Josh to show up though if you really yeah. have. Zach him. is smarter, stronger, faster, cooler, a better person, better looking. He gets better <laughs> chicks. Uh, but, Josh, but the thing about Josh is you'll laugh. <laughs> So I don't know which is more important. Uh, but next for the smokes, we're gonna go with an age-old smokes pick, one that he can't seem to escape. Joe Lava. It's Ray Sullivan. <laughs> he's been on the team for almost every year he's ever played. Hasn't been the last two years. This would I be know, a, but he's gotta bring him back. It's it's a classic. He's always on the smokes. Classic one. <laughs> he's smoking. All right. It's All right. Time. At this point, it's already way too late for him. Let's get Mr. Kaz up here. Cossin, I was, was going to say, board. I'm surprised uh, that wasn't... In the fourth round, yeah. with no quarterback yet for the Mothman. But he's a deep... not looking well, There's good. no quarterbacks. Well, and Johnny Vega. <laughs> All yeah. right, now we've got the uh, the Biltmore drivers. Nick, please make that pick. Man, this is an easy Joe Labo. If he, yeah, if he falls this late, which I'm surprised he is. We've got Labo off the board. Uh, Holmes, you're making this next pick. I would say... I would say he, Nick would be taking Zach right here. Zach Pine. You'd have the, the Pineini brothers. You think I'm going for the wow, okay. the Pizan. You, you were asking a lot. Of, you were sure asking a lot of questions <laughs> yeah. about him just a minute ago. And if you want to see the two of them shirtless, check out the Twitch stream Joshy Smashy. They both get shirtless on there at around 11 p.m. Uh, the smokes are up next. Other. The smokes are up next. Uh, the only pick I know they would not make in this scenario is Ken Silver. Ken Silver and Dan O'Shea have a story beef. I think in this scenario... No, I, love, I love Ken. I, love I Ken. think in this scenario you see him take a flyer. He's got a rounded roster. You see him take a flyer on the speed of Reed Lynch. Reed Lynch comes off the board here. Great pick. Great pick. And the Mothmen are now up. Yeah, you know, we disrespected him enough. We got to put Ken Silver here. This is, this is very late for Ken Silver. Yeah, that, is... that's, I've, I'm telling you that's not who I would take. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your quarterback. So no, it's, it wouldn't be. Well, if he's, trying to, if he's trying to punt the season, pairing right. Del Monte and taking? Ken. <laughs> pairing Del Monte and Ken is a, is is a nuclear. He's taking. Uh, all right. Yeah. That's the pick, damn That's me. That's the pick, baby. Let's go. All right. That puts uh, the roadies on the board. I'm sorry. That puts the drivers on the board, and Nick Muse making that pick. Uh, this is going to be an easy Johnny Vega. Johnny Vega coming off the board, right. really putting Holmes in a tough spot at quarterback. Ken is going to be slanging that rock. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Holmes, I already told you what I would do in this exact scenario. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I forgot if it, yeah, John A. John, John A. A coming off the board. John A. Uh, Dan is going to take Matt Warner in this situation, which is going to put Tyler McCarthy, a potential quarterback. He played quarterback for the Mothmen years back. Pretty good, too. A potential Not bad at all. quarterback. Years. Years. He was okay. He, he years did all right, back. though. Yeah, he he's, did got, all right. he's got some did raw talent. Win. You didn't win. Okay. You didn't win. You'd win with Canna quarterback. That's a promise. <laughs> Okay, Nick, you have to scream. He's slinging that. Sure. Make sure you He'd be each slinging other. that rock to Dick Del Monte. <laughs> Dude, 
That um, I wouldn't. We wouldn't even last the whole day. Like there would be a war on my team. Did Nick wouldn't play. He would not play. There's no way. Oh man, there's no way. Carson, if you're listening, you're not going to be on this team. Don't worry. <laughs> this is not going to be your this team. Is what Don't we're worry. Gonna do. We're going to screenshot this and say no draft night. This is the draft. This, this is the team. <laughs> yeah. uh, listen, and early impressions here. Obviously, this is make believe land. But the early impressions here are that uh, the the Biltmore drivers have a very good team there. You know, I think all of these teams, except the Mothman, are strong. <laughs> Which we expected them not to be. I don't think I expect them to be this week, though. I mean, this looked like a setup job by Dan O'Shea. You know what? Last <laughs> year, no one thought we were going to win, and we pulled it through. So if it can be done then, it can be done now. You I had a very good team last year. I don't think did. nobody you thought got, you were going to no win. No one said, oh, you guys are great, you're going to win. I'm not saying you were odds on favor, but you had Justin O'Shea, Del Monte, and Renzo as quarterback? I Come think on. you were the odds on favor. Maybe. I mean, you were you good. Were, you, were, you were telling me that, but you were probably just trying to fuck I, I think head. Frank is always the, the default favorite, but you were right there at second, I yeah. think. Yeah. You know? I mean, listen, again, I, th- I do think you guys, if I had to put money on who was going to win at the beginning of last year, it would have been you guys. Well, thank you, Frank. I mean, Del Monte, yeah. Justin, Renzo, that's... No it's... Ken, most importantly. Right, no Ken. Uh, the, the key was that Renzo really stepped up. He stood yep. out. He did what he needed to do. That was the that was the key in the locket. It just it felt like it felt like your your um, least important weapon was Josh, and when Josh is your least important weapon, There's you've got you've got a good roster. You yeah. know what I mean? You've got a good team. Yep. And Josh made a couple guys look silly last year. He played very well. I thought yep. it was tough, man. We couldn't we couldn't uh, we couldn't match up with you guys. That was a great team. And, and and that's crazy because you had the the horses to to match up. Yeah, I felt like I did going JJ, into it. JJ Mac and, and just, Jesus, that's a yeah. big three right there. Yeah, the problem Should've. was Should've. the uh, whoever played quarterback for them last year just they they couldn't do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, he wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the quarterback had a hard time matching up on defense. With you guys. <laughs> it's really tough. Uh, no, uh, I I do think that the, that roster last year that you had will probably go down Holmes as one of the better. Uh, at least one of the better top halves of a roster of all time. That was as good a team as you're going to see. I mean, you're talking about between your top three players, you're talking about five MVP trophies between three players. Yeah, like MVP. literally I was like one of the worst players on the team. You were, you, yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah. You drafted good, man. You drafted yeah, good. I mean, when you can get three guys that have won the way they've won, they're not just, you know, you look at certain guys in this league, they've been pieces to a winning championship. But those three guys in particular have been the main focus of championship teams. Yeah, and they're and also put them all together. There also hasn't been, as you were saying the other day, that there hasn't been that many times where the first team, especially without Frank Samisa, well, I'm sorry. First of all, a team without Frank Samisa ha- has won, and also I did not draft first last year. Right, it's only That's happened true. three times. Frank's only yeah, not that won was, three times. Yeah. That used to be my claim to fame. I was the only coach to do it without Frank, and I did it twice. But you I'm took it from me. Glad I could take it, things from you. <laughs> like your virginity. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> that's a pretty uh, good place good. to end this. That was good. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys next time. The LOL podcast. Peace, Peace out. Later. We up a cut in the cheddar, kick bird, drop kicking. David Joetta, we rob a Donovan. Nick and Nevin, a sister, we untouchable. Eating nothing but age meat, your deadbeat ain't pushing nothing but back tree, Miss Crab Tree. He's on the track, I ain't holding back. Yeah, run until I'm down. Run up on us and you get smacked. Smoke nothing but loud, you can see from the cloud. Hear the sound when we're driving through the town. Trying to run up on us and your whole crew get smacked up. Wet up, that's how we come and you'll get fucked up. You ain't locked up, boy, trap. He's on the track and we run it back like a running bear.